You've just stepped into the Curators Club. I'm Kenya Ture, our lovely host. Whitney J is away today. We have names in the building. Hi, 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 how you doing? <laughs> and the fabulous Lynn Hobson. I like to call her Money Lynn. Hey, thanks for having me. Yes, welcome, welcome. I, um, I want everybody to know how serious your job is as a publicist <laughs> and talk to me about working with hip hop superstars as a publicist. Okay, well, um, well, my name is Lynn. They call me Money Lynn. And um, I've been a publicist for about 25 years. Um, I started out in the game. You know, I went to Howard University. I got kicked out of school for partying too much. Wait a minute, pause. You're not like a Howard girl. <laughs> you were kicked out. Yeah, like academic probation. Mm. Yeah, I was placed on acad academic probation. Oh, wow. Um, my then boyfriend gave me a book called The Personal Touch, Everything You Need to Succeed in Today's Fast-Paced Business World. Um, I love the book. It was a it was a publicist who wrote it. I then wrote her a letter because we didn't have uh, email. Asked her for an internship, and that's how I ended up in New York. And the rest is history. Um, so, in terms of a publicist, uh, my job is to promote people, places, and things. Um, so every publicist kind of has a niche, and mine is our hip hop artists and authors also. Yeah. And so why did you choose this route? Why, why, why become a publicist? Um, I felt like there was a void. Um, I felt like the, the generation ahead of me didn't understand my generation. Mm. So I felt the need to like step up and be like the voice to like my peers of prominence. You know mm. what I mean? Um, and just kind of like translate. We were into Ebonics back then. You know what I mean? Gotcha. <laughs> we or lunch, kinda... son. Right. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, you know, working as mm -hmm. a publicist, mm -hmm. I imagine there has been some things you enjoy greatly. Mm -hmm. What have you enjoyed the most about being a publicist? Um, so as a publicist, we do a couple of things. We do um, image consulting. We do media placements. Okay. And we do event planning. Okay. So the event planning is what I enjoy the most. I love putting events together from soup to nuts, from beginning to end. Um, so I do a lot of Sweet 16s. I used to do a lot of my Super Sweet 16s on MTV, but I love putting together events. Okay. Well, obviously, where there's a yin, yin, where there's a, there will also be a yang. Yes. What do you least enjoy about your work? I least enjoy media placements because um, being a publicist is a lot like sales and you have to pitch your client. So every day I have to put on kind of like a, like an earpiece or headset. And I'm like, hi, my name is Lynn and I represent, no, click, you know. Oh, wow. And so it's like sales. It's kind of like saying like the warranty on your car is expiring. I'm calling editors all day, emailing them all day, pitching my clients. Yeah. So, so like for every 20 phone calls, I'll get one placement. Oh, you a hustler for real. <laughs> hey, you missed yeah, so like a take. hustle button, like hustler right. of the year. Yeah. Well, we can, we can click on that. But yeah. as far as working in hip hop. Yes. The Curators Club, we love hip hop. Okay. Myself and Whitney, we talk about hip hop probably as much as pastors talk about the Bible. And okay. so, you know, with hip hop and being a woman, what has your experience been like? Your vantage um, point? Well, I fell in love with hip hop, you know, at Howard University. I, I went there when um, Puffy or P. Diddy was going there, and a lot of now music ex executives were going there, going to Howard. And I fell in love. Well, I was into go go music, you know, um, being from DC. being born and raised in D.C. and then going mm -hmm. to Howard. So while my dorm mates were turning me on to hip hop, I was turning them on to go go music. Um, I fell in love with hip hop, you know, the weekend. It was like Howard Homecoming and Biggie came and oh, nice. spit some bars. And that was my first time like going to a hip hop concert. And I just, that's when I fell in love with hip hop. I was just sold from that day on. I was, I wanted to be a part of it forever. Okay. You know? Okay. Nice. Um, in terms of being a, a female, a, bit, a woman in a male dominated industry, mm -hmm. um, it has its plus and minuses. You know, I can't sleep with everybody like they can sleep with everybody. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean but this is a fact. Yeah. You know what I mean? It shouldn't be a fact, but that's how it's it goes. It's a fact, yeah. Um, 
I haven't had too many bad experiences. Like, you know, some women have had horrific experiences in the industry. I've mm -hmm. only had maybe like two um, negative experiences. Um, but it's not even anything to write about. So, you know so I mean? you're not held back by it? No, I'm not held back by it. I can definitely hold my own in a room full of mm -hmm. goons. There you go. Talk that talk. Talk, talk. talk that talk. talk, talk. <laughs> you know, the goon uh, whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> so before we move on to anything else, I do mm -hmm. want to talk about you being an author. Congratulations. Thank you. To this uh, incredible publication, Lynn K. Hobson, Diary of a Hip Hop Publicist. Thank you. Um, it took three years. Yeah, it took me three years to write that. I'm well to put it all together. I did keep a diary. Okay. Um, from 1989 up until 2012. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And so I just basically just kind of like put all the put everything together and put it into a book. So that book basically commemorates my 20 years in entertainment. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I was hoping to retire off that book, you know what I'm saying? But I'm still here. I'm keep I'm still going to keep going until the book sells uh, 211 million copies. That's well, listen, <laughs> that's an you know, incredible goal. Yes. So, congratulations wow. to that. Thank you. <laughs> um, the book, you know, for those who don't know your story mm -hmm. and you want to just give them an eclipse, mm -hmm. a glimpse of who you are, okay. what would you say would be the story people can take away from today's visit? Um, the story basically is that, you know, I don't come from the hood, you know what I mean? Um, but the, at the same time, my parents didn't pacify me, you know, so I was kind of like stuck between a rock and a hard place. Um, so it took a lot of hustle, took a lot of mental maneuvering. It took a lot of, um, uh, relying on my faith in God to get where I am today. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I grew up in the church, didn't, you know, so when I, away from home um you know I shunned my relationship with God and then you know one time I had a gun to my head that's in the book and uh, I was like God if you're there <laughs> God if you hear me you know and wait you know, can we pause because yes. mental health is uh, one of my favorite topics mm -hmm. and um uh, for you to have a gun to your head and be as beautiful and successful and prominent and come from prominence, mm -hmm. come from uh, a well-to-do African-American family in mm -hmm. D.C., how could you get there? I know. Um, well, that first and time, this happened you. a few times um, in, in my career. Um, in this particular time, I, God, nobody but God. We were just, um, my then boyfriend and I were, we were just being robbed. It was a home invasion we were visiting his parents um, from college for Thanksgiving, and uh, his parents were asleep, and we were coming in from a party for the weekend. You know, like you know, after Thanksgiving, after you eat dinner, you go out, and it was a home invasion, and um, they separated us and took everything out of the house while his parents were still sleeping. But they were elderly mm -hmm. parents, so they were a little older than. Uh, normal so parents. When they sleep, they sleep. Yeah, they were asleep, uh -huh. yeah. So they, we didn't wake them until it was over with, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is in D.C.? This, this is in Brooklyn, Ooh. yeah. Get them, you heard what, how about Brooklyn? They, they, <laughs> Brooklyn keep on taking it. Yeah. We got a lot of goons out there in Brooklyn. <laughs> mm. Yeah. It's a crazy experience. So from that moment on, you know, I found a church home, went to church, and that was my balance, you know. Mm. I would stop everything I was doing on Sunday and go to church, you know, no matter how busy my schedule was. And that 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 is my that still to this to this day is my balance. I mean, because of COVID, we can't go to church, but right, right. I still get the prayer in. Do you do, <laughs> you Zoom? Do, you do the Zoom prayers? And stuff I like can't that? stand Zoom. It, like the it, moment I yeah. see a link, I run right. for the hills. It just, like, it just don't feel right. It does not. I can't do it. Yeah. I cannot do it. it don't feel right for some reason. <laughs> no. Send, send, send your, uh, your, your ties to the, to the cash app down well, below. You like You know, if you have any common sense, those ties should be going to your mother or, your, or someone close to you who might need it. I, I can't imagine, you know, filling up the pockets of a pastor and, and I'm not taking care of my family or loved mm -hmm. ones. But mm -hmm. I believe in general offering. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, I, I recognize uh, that, like you said, you know, church has saved mm -hmm. your life or, oh, or God's. 
yeah, word. God, God's word. My relationship with God. Of course. Not church. Of course. <laughs> but God's of course. word. Of course. Um, and, 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 when it, and I do tithe. I do, even in the middle of the pandemic. I mean, that's what's got me through the pandemic. I mean, in my personal opinion. Oh, wow. Is, is tithing to the church still. I, no matter what, I give 10%. If it's unemployment, I give 10% yeah. of what yeah. I earn. And, yeah. and then your, my offering is to whoever needs it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, my, my aunt is a minister, and so okay. I tied to her. Okay. Yeah, I can't imagine giving. That's awesome. Yeah, I can't give. I can't imagine giving to another minister when she's yeah. my minister. Yeah, she's, who, who feeds you? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, so for you to have um, been so transparent mm-hmm. in your book, I mm-hmm. mean, what enables you to be so open and honest? about your experiences um because being in the industry what i've learned is that the person who doesn't care about anybody else's opinion um the person who can shed the ego is the person that wins in life you know Mm. all the way around the board Mm. you know um so once you realize that the only person that you have to impress is yourself and god you know life is a breeze yeah it is and um, and if something's difficult i just communicate it Hmm. You know, so working in hip hop, I I witnessed you make maybe a one or two minute video on Instagram, Mm -hmm. and it was very Mm -hmm. impactful for me. Mm -hmm. Um, And whoever I'm sure watched it, you mentioned sitting as an artist, as an up and coming hip hop artist, Mm -hmm. you tell artists go to each interview, sit down with anybody that wants. If they have an audience of ten people, you get on, you you make sure that you're present for that. Yeah. I thought that was really great advice. Yeah. Um, some artists, they think that they've been on one blog and that they've arrived already. It's like, no, your ass didn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, no blog is too big or too small. No media outlet is too big or too small. You never know who is that one person listening to that blog. That's very true. You never know. You know, so I, I do have a problem with some of my clients who turn down interviews because the audience doesn't look big enough. You know, it's it's very important. Do everything, do it all, right. no matter what. Mm. Like Kendrick said, sit down, be humble. Basically, yeah. Be humble. Yeah. Has there been any artists you don't have to mention any names mm-hmm. who you feel, even with them being superstars, that you feel like they are actually humble people? Like they've they've oh, actually yes. maintained their humility and would actually come to the curators club. Joel Santana, you know, I've been with him since day one in his career. Um, everyone has witnessed um, his climb and his downfall in terms of um, his addictions. Um, he just got home from being incarcerated for a year. Um, and he is still that humble guy, mm. you know. Um, he's back doing interviews. And um, the other day he had an interview with Complex. Mm. A couple of weeks before that he had an interview with a way smaller blog, hmm. you know, hmm. doesn't matter what it is. Hmm. But if there's an opportunity, he's going to, he's going to book it, especially if he doesn't have anything else booked. Right. I mean, this is, this is his job. This is what he does full time. Yeah. You know, so he has to ask himself, you know, what am I doing that day? If there's nothing, if he doesn't see anything on his schedule, then he'll do it. Mm-hmm. Shout out L's, man. Yeah. I, yeah. You, shout out. Yeah, I've L's. been a fan yeah. since the inception of Dipset. So mm-hmm. he's making music. He's back in the studio? Yeah, he's back in the studio. He's oh, making music awesome. with his nephew, Jacque. Okay. Um, and they have a song together, and then they have their own individual projects. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm to you tell him I said, <laughs> I'm looking forward to more. Okay, cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. and um, tell everyone where they can find you on online and on social media. Okay. So you can find me on all social media platforms at Lynn Hobson, L-Y-N-N-H-O-B as in boy, S-O-N, Lynn Hobson. And uh, is there a website where people can? Oh yes, LynnHobson.com. LynnHobson.com. Everything Lynn Hobson. <laughs> yeah, very well. This yeah. is awesome. Thank you for stopping yeah. in and dropping in and see us. And uh, again, I, I love hip hop. So um, to be able to sit down with um, you has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's been real.